well, let's try this again. So if anyone had tuned in, I had to stop it, and I've had to start again, and I've lost my page and whatever. But the whole concept is um, you can have what you say. I'm Pastor Becky from Transformation Church, I'm trying to get away from the glare that's everywhere. Um, oh, and now it's done that thing again. I bet I touched something I wasn't supposed to. So hello again. Um, anyway, my husband is setting up for tomorrow. I, I helped him as far as I could to get ready for church tomorrow. Um, we're meeting in a like a storefront, and um, so he's got the all the wires for the keyboard and stuff that he's putting together. Um, here's one of our posters. I don't know how well you can see it, but anyway, I think how's that? Yes, that is us many moons ago, um, and that and the, even that's kind of getting old now. So. Um, Anyway, I'm Pastor Becky from Transformation Church, and uh, this has been a wonderful Saturday here in sunny Florida. My um, oldest grandson just turned 11 this week, so they had a pool party, and we were there, and um, now we're here setting up for tomorrow, and, and um, if you're in the Central Florida area, we invite you to come and grow with us. Um, I don't know when you're, you'll be watching this, so just in case, check our um transformationchurch.com website to make sure where we are because as we grow we have to move to a larger facility and um, and pray about God you know whether or not you're supposed to be here and maybe you're supposed to be here to help um, with some of the the um, ministry team things so again I'm Pastor Becky from Transformation Church and um, one of the things that I really just wanted to share today I don't think it'll be too long you never know because I get going but um, is that you there's a the spiritual law of you can have what you say and um, Charles Kapp said the Lord spoke to him and he's in heaven now but the Lord spoke to him many years ago I think he said in maybe it's in the 69 or even or maybe 70 something but um, he said my people can have what they say but they're saying what they have what does that mean uh, and and why do I say it's a spiritual law because just like gravity um, if you were to go on the Empire State Building and jump off of it, you're going to splat because gravity works. And um, and I wouldn't suggest trying it to see if I'm right or not. <laughs> but nonetheless, gravity works. Well, God, when he sets a law in motion, it works. And he tells us that um, life and death are in the power of our tongue. So he, he has spoken to all of us and said um, that we should speak to our mountain. I had all of these scriptures, and then when all of the glare went crazy with my glasses, um, I'm sorry, I lost a lot of it, but we can take authority over things. The Bible tells us all kinds of things that we need to know, and if we will do what the Bible says, then we can have what the Bible says we can have. For instance, um, I, I know it by heart anyway. Um, Romans chapter 4, verse 17 says um, that call, God calls those things that be not as though they were. Um, so if you're going to be God-like, and we're supposed to imitate God as dear children, the Bible tells us, imitate um so what does imitate you do what they do well god calls those things that be not as though they were there was a song back in the day um i'm going to say 80s uh and now let the weak say i am strong let the poor say i am rich because of what the lord has done for us um Hosanna, I believe, did that. It's a beautiful song. Some songs just should keep on going. I think they have an, an anointing and they have a great message, and that's one of them. Um, and it's scriptural. It's in the Bible. It says, let the weak say I'm strong. Um, but you go, oh, well, that would be a lie. Um, well, not according to God, it isn't. Uh, when God tells us to call ourselves strong when our body is feeling weak, when, our, when, some, when we feel weak. He's telling us to say I'm rich when we may be dealing with poverty and lack because as because the spiritual principle and again i'm pastor becky from transformation church so whenever you tune in we invite you to come to our church in the central florida area but what happens is when you call those things that be not as though they were you're being godlike you're you're not lying you're doing what god said to do because the truth is by jesus christ stripes you were healed first peter 2 24. Now, the evidence in your body may be, the facts may be cancer, laryngitis, common cold, headache, um, scoliosis, Crohn's disease. You know, there could be all these different things. But the truth is not a fact. The truth is, by Jesus Christ stripes, you were healed. So you're actually speaking the truth when you say, 
by Jesus Christ stripes, I am healed. You don't have to go around and say, well, I don't have diabetes or I don't have scoliosis. No, you go around and say, by Jesus Christ stripes, I was healed. And so therefore I am healed. And just because that is the truth. I'm strong. Um, um, I'm, I, there's one of these things that I say sometimes that the Lord downloaded to me from the Holy Spirit. I'm strong in the Lord and the power of his might. I have a strong mind and memory, and I sleep well at night. I have a perfect digestive tract. It gives me great delight. I'm strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Fight the good fight of faith means I always win the fight, and I can go on. It's a, a little cadence that God gave me that works for me. And um, you might just need to say, you know what? I'm the healed of the Lord. I'm walking in the healing. Uh, uh, I, I have divine healing and wholeness working in my body. The healing power of God's working in me right now. Um, but what, you need to speak that thing because the more you say, well, i got a headache, you're going to keep the headache. Oh, I've got diabetes, you know, and you complain about all the things, and oh, I'm afraid that, you know, if I don't get better, I'm going to have my leg amputated or, you know, the things that, common things that happen to diabetics if, God, if you don't experience a, um, a God healing um, in, in your body. And you are. You're facing um, diabetic coma. You're facing... Um, amputations, you're facing blindness, um, all the things that happen with diabetes, um, loss of, of sensation in your feet. And it's, it's ugly, but you know what? You do not have to keep putting up with those symptoms. You need to begin to confess because the, the spiritual laws, you can have what you say. And God told Charles Capps way back in the day that my people keep saying what they have, like, I've got diabetes, I'm, I can't pay my bills instead of having what they say. And you need to, you might want to replay this till it clicks with you because once it clicks, um, and I know we're, I'm still, we're learning the more, the older my husband and I get, the more we know, the more we know we don't know, and the more we're learning. And, and I can honestly say, oh boy, I wish I knew some of these things way back, you know, earlier. But I can't change that. What I can change is today. And I can change my life by speaking. If you don't like what's happening in your life, start listening to what you've been saying. Now, I, had, I have to do that because there's some things I don't like in my life. And I have to look at what I've been saying. And I've been changing what I've been saying. And I'm expecting a major harvest. In fact, I'm great at harvesting. That's one of the things I've changed. I'm a great harvester. Um, we don't. You don't want to try God. You want to do God. You want to do what his word says and you want to call those things that be not as though they were you start calling yourself a great woman of faith or a great man of faith start calling yourself um bold and courageous um i will not fear i'm not a fearful person begin to speak whatever you're you're fighting against you are strong in the lord and the power of his might we don't even have to have our own might we depend on his might which i think is so awesome so i want to encourage you today that you will call those things that be not as though they were because that is a spiritual principle and, and um, it's in the Old Testament where it says let the weak say I am strong let the poor say I am rich um, because as you begin to say that you won't be poor no more <laughs> you, praise God that's the truth um, Just we need to just stand on the word of God and don't try it do it if it takes three days if it takes three weeks if it takes three years what have you lost in speaking life? And it's been proven scientifically that what you speak out of your mouth into your ears um, makes more difference than what anybody else will say, what I'm saying, what anybody else says. So you need to begin to listen. Listen, what are you saying? Stop and listen. If you have to, um, somehow find a way to record yourself and see if you haven't been causing your own financial po um, poverty, if you haven't been causing your own sickness. Oh, you know what? Every man in my family has died at the age of 52 with heart disease. Um, oh, you know what? Every woman in, in, in my family has had uterine cancer before they were 40. Um, you, stop it. I'm telling you that in love. Stop that. Because if you keep saying that, guess what you're going to get? And if you don't think this works, you're already getting what you say. And a lot of you have been saying things over and over again for years. And you just need to repent of that and just say, you know what? I repent of that. Father, forgive me, and then go on. And it's that, and just leave it there. Don't even mention it again, because he's not going to. He forgets it, and, and start to say what, um, what you have, because in Christ, you have everything you need for life and godliness. In Christ, by Jesus Christ's stripes, you were healed. 
That means you are healed. The finished work of the cross took care of everything that you ever needed. Jesus became poor that you might be rich. He, he took anxiety and, um, and you know, you need peace that passes all understanding. He took anxiety and anxiousness so that you could have that peace. And he gave you, he said, in a, I think it's in John chapter 14, that, you know, for them not to be upset because he, he was leaving, he said, he, my peace I leave you. He does. Huh, it doesn't get any better than that. God's peace, Jesus' peace, he leaves us. I say, you know, I have peace. I walk in peace. I cast all my care on him because he cares for me. He said he would. Um, all the things that, I, that you're believing for, I feel the anointing right now. Some of you have wayward children. You have just cried uh, uh, buckets of buckets and buckets of tears. You've tried everything you know. You're exasperated. And God said, just give them to me. Because you know what? If God can't do anything with them, there's nothing you're going to do, right? So why don't you call and then start calling them the mighty man of God, a mighty woman of God. Don't be saying, oh, my, you know, they're just going to end up in jail. They're going to end up pregnant. They're going to end up whatever you're saying. Um, speak life over your children. Speak life. You have the authority over your children. Speak life. Not your grown children, but your children. Um, now your grown children, you still turn them over to the Lord and trust God that that which you um, are believing for is going to come to pass. And I would ask right now, I would ask, I said, say, Father God, I ask that you put someone in their path that they will listen to because 99% of the time they're not going to listen to family. We all know that's true. And, and you know, there's reasons for that, but nonetheless, ask God to place somebody in their pathway that they will listen to and that they, so that they can receive Jesus Christ. And, um, and I heard Kenneth Hagin say, that he told people to, to, Lord, I surround them with faith and love because they're the most two powerful forces on the earth. So, excuse me, I had my Caesar salad coming back. But anyway, so surround them with faith and love um, and speak life over them and bite your tongue when you want to say something to them that's like, you're never going to amount to anything. And then repent for the things that you said because some of you are going to feel guilty now. Don't, just for repent and go on. And watch what God does. And don't give up. The Bible, and I used to, I don't know, I used to just hate this scripture. For in due season you will reap if you faint not. And I can tell you I've wanted to faint several times in situations. But the truth is if I don't faint, I, I reap. And so you can have what you say. Just don't put God in a time, time limit. Now, um, for instance, let's say you've got a... This, the only time that this, I would say this would apply, um, they've given you, you know, 30 days to live. <laughs> well, then, you you know, you're going to press in for a miracle within the next 30 days and begin to speak life. And I can tell you right now, you get a hold of those healing scriptures, you read them three times a day or more as needed because you, you can't overdose on the word of God and, and get those healing scriptures and, and speak them and, and decree that you will live and you will not die and you will see your miracle. Um, but we just we need to say what we have, and the and the word of God says we have everything we need for life and godliness. Do you know that the Bible? It, you even know what to do. Um, this is one that I'm just telling on myself now. And again, I'm Pastor Becky from Transformation Church, and we would love for you to come to Transformation Church. We're a church plant. We're on the grow, and um, we would love to see you. Um, and I can tell you right now, we're a healing station. People get healed spiritually, physically, mentally, financially, because that's our call. That's the call. Transform spiritually, physically, mentally, financially. Transformation. Anyway, putting that aside, God wants you healed and whole. It's his will for you to prosper. Um, he said, and, and we're the children of Abraham. We've been engrafted in. So every all of the blessings of, go read Deuteronomy chapter 28. All of those blessings apart, that's ours because of... Um, because of what Jesus Christ did. And all of the, the things that it says, all the nasty stuff, which includes sickness, by the way. Sickness is a curse. Sickness is a curse. I can say it. <laughs> and so is poverty. Lack is a curse. And Jesus said, the Lord is my shepherd. The Bible says, the Lord is my shepherd. I will not lack. I will not want. So if you're following Jesus, guess what? You follow the good shepherd. There's no lack there. So anyway, I started to say, you thought I forgot. That the same, um, the Holy Spirit dwells within you, and He knows everything, and He's supposed to tell you of things to come. It says in um, 
just read John chapter 14, 15, and 16, and, and I believe this is in 16. But nonetheless, um, the Holy Spirit, so he, the Holy Spirit knows everything God knows, and he is to tell us and reveal things to us. So you do know what to do. You just need to get quiet, get before God, get a pen and paper, and just sit quietly and, and, and pray in tongues, at, and, you know, as as you should, and then you might be able to get quiet and then pray tongues. And concentrate on that, what it is you, you're, you're seeking an answer for. And, and he'll begin to answer you. Um, you just need to step out and believe the word of God. What you know, why, What do you have to lose? You've been trying it the other way and it doesn't, it works. It's not what you want. You're getting exactly what you've been saying because it's a law. It's a spiritual law. So I want to encourage you to begin to speak life over yourself. Um, quit calling yourself a dummy. You know, <laughs> you know, quit saying, I can't do that. Begin to say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. No weapon formed against me will prosper. I, I am the head, I'm not the tail. I'm above, I'm not beneath. I am in love with God and God's in love with me. God has engrafted my name on his hand. It says so in Isaiah. I am the apple of his eye. <laughs> I, I'm experiencing supernatural weight loss. Some of you are believing for weight loss. Um, and I will say he will, he'll give you directions like he gave my husband and I, not saying for everybody, but we're doing um, Dr. Colbert's keto zone, K-E-T-O zone. My husband was off of, of, of diabetic insulin within 10 days. And... Um, We've heard of people that have gotten their cancer's gone, Alzheimer's gone. Um, so in, for us, this is a, a lifestyle that we're going to live right now, and, and we're loving it. And so we're doing our part, There's, but we still have to rely on God to, to um, do the total work. I believe that God's will is for us to live long, live strong, thanks to Gloria Copeland teaching on that. that and I think she got it from um, Keith Moore. Thank God for the men and women of God that are teach, that are just coming, flowing with revelation that we can get a hold of. You, have, it's really hard if you're watching this. You can get anything. You can get all of these things on YouTube, on Roku, um, your phone. Is this just is no? You can get the whole Bible and umpteen who knows how many translations um, of the Bible to one that just just clicks with you. Um, so, and I'm not saying that to put anyone down. I'm trying to encourage you that there's more and God does want to bless you. He's already laid up these blessings for us, but we have to withdraw the blessings into our life. We have to appropriate them. And one of the main ways that you do that, and I'm giving you a, a key here, it's a, it's a major key, is that we begin to speak what we want, the desired result rather than what we have. We, <laughs> You know what I'm saying? If you have diabetes, you don't keep t saying I have diabetes. But you say, by Jesus Christ stripes, I was healed. I have perfect blood sugar levels. My fasting blood sugar is 82. I have perfect blood pressure. My blood pressure is 120 over 70. Whatever the things are. And begin to speak those things over your life as though, that, speak um, what's not as though it were. And what doesn't exist as though it exists. And it will begin to exist. You don't want to reinforce that your blood pressure is 200 over 100, you know, something crazy. You don't want to reinforce what the devil's doing to your body. You just want to speak life. And, and it's a spiritual law. You can have what you say. You're already having what you say. So, you know, you can argue till you're blue in the face that this doesn't work. It actually, it's working for you right now. It's working for me right now. So if there's stuff you don't like in your life, you begin to change what you say. And as you, and I will tell you this. At first, you just do it, and faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God, and mostly out of your mouth. Um, so you need to know what the Word of God is has for you, and then begin to speak the Word of God. Somebody, you need to know what the Word of God says, and then speak the Word of God. If you don't know what it says, you're not going to be able to speak it. You need to know First Peter two twenty four, by Jesus Christ stripes I was healed. That same. Um, scripture talks about it in the first part of verse 24 is how our sins have been forgiven because he went on the cross so you can so many of you are like oh yeah I understand God he can forgive me of sins I get that oh yeah um, but you don't you don't get the fact that um, the same thing is true of your health and your healing and I started to say Gloria Copeland and, and um, Keith Moore teach that it, the, in Genesis chapter 6 3 you go look it up it says that we're supposed to live 120 years, right? 
And the, bio, the verse that says in Psalms about 70 years, um, thank you, Keith. Um, the, the verse that says that we're only supposed to live 70 or 80 years, that's a bunch of hogwash. That was for the children of Israel who were disobedient, that died in the, um, the, the pr desert before they could go to the promised land. They weren't allowed to go into the promised land. Well, that's not you and me. And if Moses lived to be 120 under the old covenant, and we're under the new covenant, which is full of much better promises and a much better covenant, we should live to be 120 and not feeble and not old. My youth is renewed like the eagles. I say that every day because that's scripture. My youth is, um, read, uh, I believe it's Psalms 103, and it talks about how that, um, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name, He has who forgives all of my um, iniquities and sins, who, who um, heals all, all my diseases. And this is the Old Testament. How much more in the New Testament? Um, and it says, in my youth is renewed like the eagles, satisfies my mouth with good things so that my youth is renewed like the eagles. Um, so we don't have to be feeble. We don't have to have Alzheimer's. We don't have to say, hey, you know what? I, I'm 50 years old now or whatever, so it's downhill from here. Or I think they try to tell you at 40, you're going downhill. You're not going downhill. You haven't even hit half halfway is 60 if you only go to 120 so um god begin it is a scriptural it's promised in the word you can have what you say it's a it's a spiritual principle it's a spiritual law so if you, like i said if you don't like what you're what you're living what you're putting what you're putting up with you are putting up with it then you begin to speak life and again i'm pastor becky from transformation church i'm uh I'm so glad that, that you tuned in, and, um, and I thank you. And I'm looking for testimonies. I have, oh, I'm so excited. We've been getting testimonies in, people being healed of um, cancers and, and salvations and whatnot happening. God wants you well. It's the children's bread. You don't have to be sick because God's plan for you is to be well. And even though it says, um, you know, many are the afflictions of the righteous, and I don't happen to think that sickness, but stuff comes, stuff happens to everybody in this life. But the Lord delivers us out of them all. So no matter what your situation is, but God, because he will deliver you out of every situation. You say, I'm going to be delivered. I'm winning. <laughs> Some of my brother and my, my husband understand this because a lot of times I'll, you know, I don't say anything else, but I'll look at him and I go, I'm winning. I'm winning. I'm winning because I am. I'm winning and I'm going to win. And because by Jesus Christ stripes, he paid for everything. And I am plan on living everything the finished work of the cross did for me. And you should, too. You shouldn't live beneath what God has for you in Jesus' name. So if you have a um, – I don't want to close without giving anyone an opportunity if you're not 100% sure that if you were to die today that you would go to heaven. And you want to be sure, um, I want you to pray this prayer after me. And, yes, it is that easy. So say, Heavenly Father, I believe Jesus Christ is your only son. I believe Jesus died on the cross for me. I believe he rose from the dead on the third day. And I believe that Jesus is now seated in heavenly places right next to you. I ask you to forgive me. And I receive forgiveness. And I ask you to heal my body. And I receive healing for my body. I ask for healing spiritually, physically, mentally, and financially. And I receive the finished work of the cross. Take my life and do something with it. And baptize me with the Holy Spirit with speaking in tongues. Amen. Now I tell you as a minister of the gospel, if you prayed that prayer with me, you are born again. It's what the Bible calls, you're a new person, you're a new creation. So when you die, if it's three minutes from now or 30 years from now or 90 years from now, you're going to heaven. And more importantly, you need to get in a church that believes in the full gospel and the full Bible, that believes the truth. And, um, and I want to invite you, oh dear, we did it again. Sorry about that. <laughs> I can't. Oh, well, laughter does good like a medicine. <laughs> I don't even know what I hit, but anyway. I'm just, and you know what? The angels in heaven are rejoicing because you received Jesus. 
And if anyone needs healing in their body right now, in fact, I speak to scoliosis right now, and I command it to leave your body right now. Um, emphysema and, and any other uh, skin conditions that are causing you to itch ridiculously, um, I command those skin conditions to leave in the name of Jesus. Allergies go in Jesus' name. Huh, by Jesus Christ stripes, you were healed in Jesus' name. Now, all healing is available to you. Every now and then, the Holy Spirit, will, this was called a word of knowledge, will tell me something that's actually happening to somebody that will be watching this now or later. And, um, and th that's just, but you should take your healing no matter what it is. Um, in fact, I'm hearing somebody who has dry ear, um, no, dry tear ducts. And um, it's just really aggravating. So your tears are coming back. The, tear, the, the proper amount of moisture to your eyeballs is coming back in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Well, this is a great time to say goodbye. Again, I'm Pastor Becky from Transformation Church. Come join us. We're a, we're a church plant. We're looking. We're on the grow. So double check to see where we are. Right now we're in Apopka, Florida. But we'll be in the Central Florida region. Um, but as we grow... We never know where the facility will be. So come see us. Come join us. And, um, and if you have any prayer requests or whatever, questions, just send them in. We love you. Have a great day. Bye-bye.